I'm the storyteller and my stories must be told. I have many stories, tales for both the young and old. I have many voices to describe many places. Many names have I and many faces. In Russia I am Ivan, in Sweden I am Jan. In Germany I'm Johan. In America I'm John From my many travels I have gathered these tales To teach you good sense when all else fails Sometimes there are tears, sometimes there is laughter But always a happily ever after Long ago and far away, deep in the heart of a great pine forest, there once stood, among the cold winter snow, a pretty white cottage. Here lived a widow and her two children. Helena, her daughter, she loved very dearly. But Maruska, her stepdaughter, she did not like at all. The widow spoilt young Helena most dreadfully. She made her pretty clothes and bought her many gifts. Poor Maruska received nothing, not even thanks for all the hard work she did about the house. But Maruska was a kind and cheerful girl and never complained. She just cooked and cleaned and swept from dawn to dusk. But Helena was a lazy, unkind girl who often lost her temper. And when she did this, her mother would become quite upset, for she did so want Helena to be happy. The reason Helena got so grumpy was that she was jealous of her sister. Because Maruska was kind and sweet, Helena feared that all the young men who came to visit her would fall in love with Maruska instead of her. Neither Helena nor her mother wanted Maruska to live with them at all. She was very useful about the house, it was true, but they were always trying to think up ways of getting rid of her. Helena was growing more and more impatient with Maruska's presence. Finally, one day, the widow had an idea. Hmm, she smiled wickedly to herself. What should get rid of her at last? When she told Helena her plan, Helena was delighted. The next morning, Maruska was clearing away the breakfast when who should appear but Helena. She looked very pleased with herself. Go and pick me some daisies from the forest, she cried. Maruska was surprised. No daisies grew in the forest in winter. But Helena just dragged Maruska out, crying that if she returned without the daisies, she would be beaten hard. So out into the snow went Maruska. That's the last we'll see of her, chuckled the wicked widow. Ruska's only friend, the farmer's boy, saw her go and worried for her safety. Maruska ran into the forest. She was frightened and confused. Why were her stepmother and sister being so unkind to her? Why had they sent her out into the forest in the depth of winter? The snow was very deep underfoot and it was very, very cold. With only a thin shawl to cover her, Maruska soon began to shiver. Where, oh, where was she going to find any daisies growing in the middle of the forest in winter? But she dared not return home without them, for she knew she would be beaten. On and on she went, deeper and deeper into the forest. All the paths were covered by snow, and it wasn't long before she knew she was lost. She'd never been so deep into the forest before. Oh, Maruska was so cold and 
miserable, she began to cry. And suddenly, she looked up to see something bright shining in the trees. It was a light that seemed to beckon her on. Maruska walked towards it. It twinkled kindly. Maruska followed it. But where was it leading her? Suddenly, she found herself standing on the top of a hill, and there, in the hollow below, she saw twelve men sitting on twelve rocks around a brightly burning fire. Maruska noticed that three of the men were very old, while the three beside them looked a little younger. The next three looked quite young and bright, and the last three were the youngest of all and looked very cheerful. These twelve men were the twelve months of the year. December sat on the highest rock. As each month passed, the twelve brothers changed their places, moving on to the next rock, just the way the months follow each other throughout the year. Whoever sat on the highest rock was the month that controlled the weather. As Maruska looked down, she could see that for the moment it was wintry December that reigned supreme. The glow of the warm fire was so inviting that Maruska hurried down the steep, snowy slope towards the circle. She felt a little shy of the twelve silent months, but she was so chilled she feared she would freeze to death if she did not warm herself soon. Quietly, Maruska entered the circle and walked slowly up to the fire. What brings you to the forest in such bitter weather? asked December crisply. I was sent to look for daisies, replied Maruska. Daisies, said December sharply. This is not the month for daisies. I know it isn't, replied Maruska sadly, but my sister and stepmother made me come and they will beat me if I return without them. December smiled. Maruska was much too sweet a girl to be beaten. He would help her. So he walked slowly over to one of the youngest months. Brother April, he said, go and sit in my place. April was happy to help, so he walked over to the highest rock while December sat down in his place. Maruska watched. What was he going to do? Suddenly, April raised his long arms to the sky and the flames in the fire shot higher and higher. As Maruska watched and wondered, the fire began to melt the snow as December lost his sway and then April took command. Until there, among the melting snow, Maruska saw some pretty white daisies. She was overjoyed. Then she heard April cry, hurry Maruska, hurry and pick your daisies. So Maruska wasted no time, and quickly she knelt and began to gather up the flowers. How surprised Helena would be when she saw them. How kind December and April were to change the weather just for her. When she had a large bunch of daisies, she got up and left spring behind. While December waited patiently, she hurried over to April and thanked him for all his help. April rose from the tallest rock and returned to his place. Maruska thanked December kindly, and then she hurried away. December returned to his position. Once more, winter reigned supreme. Maruska hurried on up the hill, and although the air was chilled and the snow deep and cold underfoot, she did not feel it, for the warmth of the twelve months' kindness filled her with joy. On and on she ran, clutching her precious daisies, and although there was no path for her to follow, somehow she found her way. At last she came to the edge of the forest. She was nearly home. When the widow and Helena saw Maruska running through the trees, they could not believe it, especially when they saw what she was holding in her hands. Daisies indeed! How very annoying. 
Maruska was very pleased to be home and out of the cold, snowy forest. She was sure that Helena would be pleased with her flowers, so with a happy smile, she handed her sister the pretty white daisies. Helena was furious. She didn't want the stupid flowers. Poor Maruska didn't understand. What had she done wrong? Hadn't she brought the daisies just as they asked? The next morning, Helena awoke and ordered Maruska to return to the forest. This time she wanted some strawberries. Strawberries don't grow in the winter, thought Maruska, but she said nothing, for she could see that both Helena and her stepmother were determined that she should go. No, it did not matter if Maruska had to wait in the forest until summer, for if she returned to the cottage without any strawberries, she would be severely beaten. This time they were sure that they'd seen the last of the troublesome girl. Poor Maruska found herself out in the cold, snowy forest once more. Where, oh, where was she going to find strawberries in the middle of winter? On and on she ran, until she was just about to give up in despair. And she saw the light again. She ran towards it, and again it led her up the hill, until she reached the top. And she saw, to her great joy, the twelve months there below. Quickly, she ran down the slope towards their glowing fire. She did not wish to disturb their silence, but just warm herself a little. Shyly, she entered the circle. She felt so warm and safe here. Then December spoke. What is it this time, my child? he asked. Maruska explained how she'd been sent into the forest to find strawberries and how she was frightened to return home without them, for she would surely be beaten. So again, December got up from the highest rock and walked across the circle to one of the younger months. Maruska felt quite humbled, for again the powerful months were going to help her. Brother July, said December, go and sit in my place. July got up and December sat down his place. When July sat down on the highest rock, he too raised his arms to the sky. The flames leapt up, and as the fire began to melt the snow, July brought a little summer to the forest. And much to Maruska's delight, she saw before her many juicy red strawberries all ready to be picked. Quickly, Maruska, cried July, go and pick the strawberries. So with great delight, Maruska knelt and gathered up the ripe fruit. They smelt so sweet. She was sure they must taste good. This time, Helena and her stepmother would surely be pleased. December watched over Maruska. She was such a sweet and gentle girl, and certainly did not deserve to be treated so harshly. July, too, was happy to have brought her a little summer. At last, Maruska's apron was filled with strawberries. Oh, thank you, she cried as she stood before the twelve months. Thank you, dear months, for your help. And with a happy smile, away she went. Maruska was sorry to leave the kindly months, but she knew she must return to the cottage. Perhaps this time, Helena would smile when she saw the strawberries. On she hurried, through the thick snow, for she did not wish to remain in the forest after dark. When Helena and the widow saw the strawberries, they were furious. But they quickly decided it would be a waste to throw them away, so they ate them for supper, and very delicious they were too. Though Maruska never knew, for not one single strawberry was she allowed to eat. All she received were cold and scornful glances from Helena and her mother. I should be glad I wasn't beaten, thought Maruska a little sadly to herself. The next morning, Maruska was working as usual, shredding some corn. She was hoping that she would now be left in peace.
when who should appear but Helena. Go and fetch me some grapes from the forest, she ordered. Grapes? Oscar. She would never find any grapes growing in the forest at this time of year. It was much too cold. But her stepmother just snatched up the corn and pushed her out into the cold once more, while Helena watched gleefully. Again, Ruska walked out into the cold, snowy forest. She felt so unhappy. How many more times would she be sent out to face the dangers of the winter alone? Warm Ruska now began to despair, for whatever she did, her stepmother and Helena still tried to get rid of her. She ran and ran through the cold, snowy forest. This time she knew her way. She must find the twelve months, for they were the only ones who could save her from freezing to death. Dear friends, she cried as she entered their circle, I'm sorry to disturb you again, but I've been sent out to find grapes, and I dare not return without them. But grapes do not grow in winter, my dear, said December kindly. I know they don't, cried Maruska, but I did so hope you might help me again. So December got up and walked slowly over to one of the older months. October, my brother, he said, go and sit in my place. Much to Maruska's delight, October got up and walked over to December's rock. Sitting down, October raised his arms up to the sky. Again, the flames leapt up. And suddenly, from nowhere, came a great wind that blew many leaves. And all at once, it was autumn. And there before Maruska were many bunches of juicy grapes just waiting to be picked. How lucky she was to have the powerful months as her friends. She picked first one, then a second bunch of juicy green grapes. Both December and October were delighted to help Maruska. Maruska thanked the months for their kindness. Then away she went, up the hill. Surely this time Helena and her stepmother would be pleased, for the grapes were the finest she'd ever seen, and would be a treat even for them. She did not dare tell them about the twelve months and their help. They were sure to think she was lying. Helena was just thinking how pleasant it was not to have the troublesome Maruska around when she appeared in the doorway. Helena started with surprise, but smiled when she saw she had no grapes. Until Maruska showed her the two bunches, Helena was furious. I don't believe you found them in the forest, she cried. I shall go and look for myself, and if I find you are lying, out you go forever. Don't go, beseeched Maruska. You will never find the place. But that made Helena all the more determined, and off she marched. Helena put on her warmest coat and went out into the snow. She was sure she wouldn't find any grapes growing in the forest. They'd be able to get rid of Maruska at last. Helena walked on and on through the forest until she grew very tired and cold. She had just decided to return home when she suddenly realized she'd lost her way. Then she caught sight of the light in the trees. Perhaps it was the light from the cottage. Helena hurried on. She was very surprised to see the twelve strange men sitting there in the snow. But they did have a fire, and Helena was feeling very cold, and she hurried down towards it. Without a nod or a smile, Helena marched haughtily up to the fire. What brings you to the forest? asked December. That's none of your business, old man, replied Helena rudely. We'll see about that, cried December, as Helena stared at him coldly. And he thrust the giant snowflake towards her. And in seconds, Helena was caught in a fierce snow blizzard. Round and round her it swirled. December would not relent, for he knew who she was. The snow just fell thicker and faster. Deeper and deeper it fell, until at last it reached right up to her chin. The snow blizzard continued for the rest of the day. 
and when Helena did not return home, the widow grew worried and went out into the forest in search of her. On and on she stumbled through the snow, calling Helena's name. But she received no answer. Deeper and deeper into the forest went the widow, and still the snow fell until she finally disappeared. Days and weeks passed. Maruska waited for Helena and her stepmother to return. Winter turned to spring. Maruska was happy for the first time in her life. Without her stepmother and Helena to bully her, the cottage became a pleasant place to live. And more importantly, Maruska had fallen in love with a young farmer's son. They were soon married, and there was no happier couple in the district. Maruska looked forward to the evening when he returned from the fields. Never again did she feel sad and lonely, for all the unhappiness she had suffered vanished with her newfound love. For he was as kind and gentle to her as her stepmother and Helena had been cruel. 